What's up guys, in this video I'm just going to be going over how tweening works in Godot 4.0. So Godot 4.0 actually just released, and I thought I'd go over just the tweening basics um, since it has changed dramatically. So if you don't know what tweening is, it's essentially an animation that can be played dynamically. So instead of using the typical animation player to set specific values and have like a predefined sequence that you want to play, tweening you can actually set a starting position, an ending position for any value, and then tell the tweening component or the tweener to interpolate between those values with specific easing and transition types. So it sounds kind of complicated, but um, it's actually really straightforward and easy to use. So I'll just go ahead and show you guys how this works in Godot 4.0. So in my scene right here, I just have a basic sprite, and I want to tween this to the mouse position whenever you click on the screen. So what it will look like at the end is if I click anywhere on this game, it'll tween the sprite from where it was to the mouse position um, in the duration of one second. And I can do this anywhere, and it'll work dynamically with the mouse. So how you used to have to set that up in Godot was you would add a new node, and it would be called like a tweening node, and then you'd have to get that node and then assign properties to it and then make sure to start the tween. But in Godot 4.0, it's extremely optimized. So what I can do is go into my script that I created on the sprite, and you can see that I have a basic input event function set up so that whenever you click the mouse, it will detect the event. And then how this will work is it will create a new variable called tween. And in order to actually initiate a new tween, in Godot 4.0 from now on, you have to call create tween. So there's no other way to create a tween that I'm aware of, any other way, um, it looks like it's invalid, but you essentially call this create tween function and it will create a new tweening component and then assign it to the node that created it unless specified otherwise. So when I click the mouse, it'll create this new tween and then it'll say tween dot tween property and this function will essentially take a target and then you will need to provide a property and then you will need to provide an ending position for that property to tween to and you will have to provide a duration as well. So every time I click it'll create a new tween and it will assign a new tweener is what it's called onto this tween which will say self which is the sprite will tween from its current position which is defined by the property here to the position of the event which is the mouse click position over the duration of one second. The reason I'm not calling this from a member variable up here, because alternatively, what you could be thinking is you could say, um, you know, like on ready var tween equals create tween for this node. And then alternatively, you could just call the tween property here. Now, theoretically, that should work, but how the tweens are set up is you actually cannot do this. And that is because when a tween finishes its interpolation or its animation, it will actually destroy itself or be removed from the scene upon the next frame. So the frame after it finished. So if you create a tween here, then the next frame, the tween won't exist. So when I try to call tween property here, it'll be invalid because the tween is no longer there. So how to get around this is you have to create the tween and then in the same frame you have to assign all the tweeners or the properties you want to tween to that. And then on the next frame, it'll start tweening those. It seems a bit limiting, but you also have to note that you can create an infinite amount of tweens and tweeners, um, theoretically, upon the same node. So it's not just limited to the one here. I'm gonna go back to that script that I had, and then I'm also gonna go over a few other basic cases, just so you guys have a better understanding of how this works, since it was a bit confusing the first time I looked into it. So another thing to note is if you override a property like position. So in this instance, every time I click the mouse here, it will tween the position. And you can see that before it finishes, I can click again and it will override that tween that's already using position to start the new one. So that is something to note because if you override that same property, it will cancel out the other tween and just use the latest one. But this is because it's creating a new tween. So let's say we clicked somewhere and we wanted it to move to two different locations on the screen um, with the same tween component. Then we could actually just call interpolate property 
on this tween twice before it actually starts on the next frame. So this first one will interpolate from its current position to the position of the mouse. The second one could interpolate from its current position to its current position minus like, I don't know, vector two, we could do like X 200 maybe, Y 100, and then it would interpolate from the position to a position offset from where it is right now. So let's try this out. You can see if we click, it'll go there first, and then it'll go to our next defined position. And that's because we defined all these on the same tween. And when you do this, it will actually queue them. So it'll put them in an order, that being the order you called them, obviously, and they will then execute one after the other. Now, if you wanted to get around this, this, you could actually call the parallel function before the tweener. So this would be the tweener where we're tweening the property, but if you called dot parallel here, then it would tell the engine to run this tween and start it at the same time as the one before it. Now, let's say you wanted all the animations or tweens created inside of this tween component to run parallel, then you would call that on the tween itself. So here we're creating a new tween. And then after we create the tween, we assign dot set parallel, and we would set it to true, obviously. So now any tweener created on this tween will be running at the same time. Now, obviously, since we're using the same property for this um, specific setup, it will not work as intended. I believe it will only use the, I guess we could test it, but we're going to get some undesired output. Yeah, it's not moving correctly. So if you wanted to do something like this, we could interpolate something like the rotation in degrees, and then we could interpolate it from its current um, rotation to direction of like 180. And then when we click, you would see that these tweens happen at the same time. And just to show you this again, if we take out the set parallel, it will default to queuing them in order, and it will happen one after the other. So you can see how powerful that is. Um, you can really do a lot with this system, but there are a couple more basic things I do want to go over quick. So let's say you wanted to edit the tweeners a bit more in depth. Um, you could refine all of your animations by using all the property tweeners, which you can kind of read up on in the documentation. I'll leave a link to that in the description if I remember, but um, you can just look up like Godot property tweener and you can read all about it, but this is kind of where you'll edit all of your animations. So I'll just give you a quick rundown of all the functions you can call. And these will be called after you actually call the tween property method. So at the end here, the first one is going to be dot as relative. This will basically make the final value, which is right here, used as a relative value. So instead of always rotating to 180 degrees, we'll rotate from our current position to 180 degrees added on since it's a relative value. The next one is called from, and this one goes hand in hand with a different one called from current. But essentially what you'll do is you'll put a value inside of this function, and this will specify a value value for the property to start at. So if we say from 90 degrees in this case, then it will interpolate from 90 to 180 degrees. The other one that's pretty similar to this one is called from current. And this one does the same thing as the last one essentially, but instead of specifying what value you want to start from, it'll start from the current value, which is really helpful for just doing quick animations. This is one of the most helpful functions personally, I think to use for like dynamic animating. This will obviously start from wherever it is and then rotate to the desired orientation in this case. Now, the next one up is delay. So to use this one, you have to call set delay and then you pass in a time and this will be in seconds. So we can delay this tweener by one second and you can see we click, moves, waits one second and then it will rotate. So that one's pretty straightforward. And then we have two more, and these are more like for refining your animations to look nicer. You'll definitely want to be using all of these, but the first one would be the easing type. So we can say set ease. And we have a few built-in options here. So you can see it will pop up our tween class. And then inside of here, we have a few enumerators. We have ease in, ease in out, ease out, and ease out in. And if you don't know how easing types work, essentially the easing in will be a curve that will 
will slowly kind of ease into the animation for the property value curve and then ease out will do the same thing but reversed so at the end of the animation it will kind of like slow down how much it's changing the property um, you can kind of figure out the rest of them it's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it but try this ease in one and we're actually going to call it on the positioning and when we run this it will kind of accelerate to the mouse instead of just moving towards the mouse in a linear fashion um, the next one is the transition type this one can be called by calling set trans and this one again is essentially a curve that it will also use to interpolate the values specifically but if you do not know how transition types work this image that I have up right here you can see that over the course of your animation which will be the X position on this curve um, you would move linear in this case on the top left but if we went to like an elastic type you could see that the curve kind of goes crazy and this will simulate like an elastic transition type which will kind of spring back and forth to the design desired final output value of your property. For now, we're gonna try the elastic one because that one's fun. So we can just write tween.transelastic and we'll see how this works. You can see how it changed the tweening a lot. It now kind of accelerates and then decelerates out of like a elastic kind of feel, which is really cool. And then you can also combine any of these properties that I just talked about. You just add them one on top of the other. So we can also add set ease and we can say ease out this will also change it a lot now it looks really good kind of moves quickly towards the mouse position and then bounces back i don't know if you can see that well but uh yeah so you can do a lot with the new tweening system. I do think it's a lot more modular. It's a bit interesting to get the hang of because there are some like basic things you have to understand like when the tweens kind of deactivate or are deleted and then um, when you can set properties to tween. But there is a lot that I would like to cover in this, but um, it's just a lot of information. So I just wanted to give you guys a basic rundown on how to set up basic tweens or tweeners in your projects. But yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. Um, if you learned anything new or you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. But yeah, with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.